The Nigerian government says it's freed 21 of the Chibok schoolgirls kidnapped over two years ago by Boko Haram militants. The release came as a result of negotiations brokered by the Swiss government and the International Committee of the Red Cross. But there are conflicting reports about the terms of those deals. For more on this release, I'm joined now by Peter Fan, the director of the Atlantic Council's Africa Center. Peter, thanks very much for coming in. You've come in all the time uh, during the course of this Chibok crisis. Were you surprised that some of the girls uh, freedom seems to have been negotiated? Well, negotiations have been going on and off, not only during the current administration of President Mohamedou Buhari, but also there were attempts made during the previous administration of President Goodluck Jonathan. So the Nigerian government has sought to bring these girls back. What's been interesting this time has been that there's no quid pro quo, at least that we're aware of. The government has officially denied exchanging any prisoners. Uh, and that would be an interesting step. It's, it will say something about Boko Haram, but they're willing to give up uh, these hostages for, for, nothing. for nothing. On the other hand, one has to also be attentive. The fact that they could still, even with the military defeats that they've suffered in the last year and a half, still keep these girls together and produce 21 of them. And just two months ago, we had a video where the, one of the Clements to be uh, leader of Boko Haram, Abu Bakr Shekau uh, and his people, appeared with up to 50 of these girls, means that they still ha are puissant enough to hold hostages and organize these so, things. So why would they negotiate? If they're not getting anything from this deal in return, what's in it for them? Well, that remains to be seen. Now, what was very clear, we have to parse the government statement, there were no prisoners exchanged. Right. But they we may do be know getting something else. They may be getting something else, whether it be money, whether it be food, because there's a severe uh, food shortage in the area caused in part by Boko Haram's depredations, but also because of the military campaign against them. So that may be an issue as well. Put this in context, Peter, how much territory of Boko Haram lost since uh, the Chadians and the Cameroonians got involved in fighting against them? Certainly. A, a year and a half ago, Boko Haram held an area roughly the size of Belgium, Luxembourg, perhaps the Netherlands thrown in. So a fairly sizable territory. Now, they really don't hold territory per se. That doesn't mean the government controls the entire northeast of Nigeria or parts of Niger, Chad, and Cameroon. But so they're not holding territorial dominion, but they still are operative. They're still able somehow, it's not very easy if one thinks about it, to hide dozens, if not hundreds of, of prisoners, but they still manage it. So there, there's still a refuge out there. Peter, do we know what happens to these girls once they're freed? Well, these girls will be brought, as the government has said, uh, to a multifaceted, integrated unit of medical uh, attention, but also psychiatric, psychological, and other therapy. So they're, they're, they're given care, and I applaud the Nigerian government for doing it. These specific girls, these 21, are being brought from Borno State to Kaduna, uh, one of the regional centers in the north, and eventually will be brought to Abuja. But it's a long road to recovery, and we certainly wish them the best. Okay, Peter Pham, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you.